with the challenges of young people being married today in the Torah community, we hear of, unfortunately, many divorces in Shana Rishona. Is there a course, is there a mahalach that we could take some of that love that your parents showed to each other to bring it into our, into our children's lives? There's a mahalach, I think there's two possibilities. One of the things is that we should teach our young people, our boys and girls, what marriage is all about. Uh, um, I'm not familiar with what is taught in Chosen classes and Kalda classes, but I suspect that some of them don't deal with what the relationship should be like. Right? Uh, if they do, wonderful. If not, it should be done more. I know that the Stipula reacted, this was so many years ago, but the Stipula reacted by saying, right? What do you want from the young man? Right? For the past 10 years, he's had no relationship except with the stender. Right? And now you're taking him and putting him into a relationship. The stender had no demands. You know? Move it here, move it there. Right? <laughs> and now you're taking and putting him into a relationship with another human being who has wants and needs which sometimes are going to conflict with his own. What do you want from him? He's never never heard of that. So I think that what we have to do is we have to uh, uh, try and have more training, more education for our young people what marriage is about so that they don't have ridiculous expectations. There is, so that's one approach. The other approach, I am told that this that goes on in Bells, is that uh, every newlywed couple is assigned a monitor. Right? and meets with them uh, regularly for the first year, right? which is a fantastic idea. Right? So there are ways to deal with it, uh, but uh, just the, the way marrying off kids with none of whom have an idea as to what the gravity of marriage is all about and what the seriousness of marriage is all about and how to relate to another person, and sometimes the motivation for the shittah can even be questionable. Is, was it made for the kids' sake or was it made for the parents' sake? Uh, so I, I think the whole, the whole shittah thing has to be looked at more seriously and uh, that we should either uh, provide much better uh, pre-marriage uh, counseling or uh, post-marriage coaching like the, like the Bells are doing. Incidentally, I was told the other day that because of this phenomena of early divorces, that some people, when they give the gift to the Hosan Kala, are dating the checks six months ahead. <laughs> I wanted to uh, ask the last question, then we'll open up to the floor. Uh, Rabbi Tursky, you speak about the concept of the spirituality deficiency syndrome, SDS. Can you tell us oh, a little a, bit about that concept? Thing. You know, I had mentioned th this morning, I had mentioned what it means to be a mensch. Right? I mentioned different things like the ability to have a golden life, the ability to uh, forgive, the ability to do chesed, right? uh, the ability to uh, choose right from wrong, the ability to deny one's bodily drives, or a bunch of kinds of things which are unique for her. These unique f human features are what I call the human spirit. Right? And spirituality, as far as I'm concerned, is being the best human being that you can be. And being an intel intelligent itself is not enough. So spirituality is us. Now I believe that if a person is deficient in iron, he's going to have an iron deficiency syndrome, and he's going to have certain symptoms. If the deficient is vitamin D, you're going to have vitamin D deficiency. So what happens is the doctor does a blood test, and he diagnoses, and he says there is a, uh, a lack of uh, uh, insufficient vitamin D, insufficient iron, and he prescribes the thing, right? I believe that the uh, symptom of lack of spirituality which means that we are not fulfilling ourselves as a human being. Right? 
And there's too much of us that are on the animal level and not enough on the spiritual human level. That because we're not fulfilling ourselves, the symptom is discontent. Right. Not depression. And it's not the kind of discontent and depression that's going to be relieved by an antidepressant. It's just that because we are not fulfilling ourselves and we have, like, like a body is deficient in uh, minerals, we are deficient in spirit. That's the spirituality deficiency syndrome. What happens is when they come to therapy, and we have to be honest about that, we will ask the most personal questions. But I don't know if we ask them, if we ask our clients, what are you doing about your spirituality? What kind of goal have you had for yourself in life? How, um, uh, how are you managing your anger? How are you managing your resentment? How are you managing your forgiveness? How are you managing your ability to delay gratifications? How are you managing your ability, your ability to not be jealous of what others have? Uh, all of the kinds of things that are uh, part of middas. Because I think that if we don't fulfill our middas, we're going to be discontent. And when we come to a therapist, that one area is overlooked. And we'll be interested in knowing, of course, about their upbringing and how they related to their father and their mother and their grandparents and to their siblings, which are all important, but we're missing spirituality. Right? And we've been taught in our training, don't touch the patient's religion. I say, right. The spirituality has nothing to do with religion. The spirituality has to do with mythos. Right? And I think that we have to, as therapists, uh, make a, 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 a significant change in uh, that in addition to the kinds of things that traditionally we investigate, uh, that we ask people about, about their mythos. Right? And point out to them that without fulfilling their mitos and perfecting themselves to the degree that they can as human being, uh, they're going to be discontented. So that's the spiritual reality.